Well, hello, uh, Terry. I'm so happy that you were able to join me today for my uh, Marketing Innovators interview series. You're the first ah. in line. Yay. Um, so I'm going to introduce you, and then I've got some great questions for you. So um, sure. this, you are Terry Starbucker, St. Marie, um, co-founder and creator of SobCon. Um, which has been taking place in Chicago, and now we have SobCon Northwest here in Portland. That's um, right. So excited. And you're also the author of an ebook, uh, Leadership from a Glass Half Full, The Five Lessons You Need to Learn Before You Jump into the Pool. Love the title. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and it, uh, according to your website I, and according to some conversations that we have had also in the past, it looks like you're currently doing some consulting work, helping businesses with something that you have coined in, called inside out thinking, which right. is it's fascinating. So I was thinking to kick things off, maybe you could talk to us a little bit about that. Well, uh, inside out thinking is a concept that my partner, Liz Joss, and I, well, Liz Joss in particular, had come up with several years ago um, when she was writing a series of blog posts about trying to think outside the box about certain business concepts. And when, when Liz and I decided to take SobCon, uh, which was a, a, a small business and entrepreneurial event, and then try to turn it into something where we actually offer services directly to businesses, uh, applying our concepts of inside-out thinking, it was just kind of a logical thing to go with because um, I would tend to think that some of the ideas that both Liz and I come up with are somewhat unconventional in, in a lot of ways, and, and we tend to approach um, the way we look at businesses and how we frame uh, strategies and execution uh, a little bit differently than others. And so I think we like to call it inside-out thinking because it, it really draws from a lot of the cores and, and, and value sets and passions of the business people themselves, which I think is our, our unique twist to what we do. So. That's, where the, that's really where Inside Out Thinking came from. And now it's the basis of, of a consulting business where we, we do leadership work, we do uh, operational and financial work, which is my background. And I'm also a big, um, I'm very passionate about customer care, and I do a customer feedback and retention program and service. And so it's a pretty broad ranging um, consulting practice, but it, it, it all revolves around um, the core, which is, uh, I think, the, the, what we embody through the, the SobCon event. Ah, well, and what a great segue um, into that. So we are 49 days out from SobCon Northwest, and this is the second um, time the event has taken place in the Pacific Northwest. Is that correct? That's right. We did it for the first time last year here in Portland in September of uh, 2011. Great, and I, I, I had read that it looks like this year's theme is starting up strategically, yeah. um, so I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about that. What does that mean, and, and what, what can we expect this year? Well, Lisa, um, I, I, I've been living here in, in downtown Portland uh, for about 22 months now, and I, I was really, I have been really um, in absorbing the startup culture that's here this great group of entrepreneurs and creatives that um, buzz around this area. Um, I'm, we're two blocks or three blocks away from the Pi, the Portland Incubator Experiment. We're near the Portland Seed Fund. There's uh, Urban Airship a couple blocks away and, and CloudAbility and some of these great startups that are here. And so uh, when Liz and I were talking about um, themes for SobCon this year, it just seemed really logical because of the uh, involvement that I've had. And I have clients that are startups that we really wanted to take a deeper dive at that startup culture and that startup uh, mentality and try to apply it in a broader sense, not only to just startups or tech startups or people that are looking for money, but the people that are also bootstrappers that are trying to do businesses on their own without the benefit of outside financing or, or middle-sized businesses that have already established but are looking for sparks. I mean, there's something to be said about the path that a startup takes to try to define itself and its market and its strategy. To, and I think those, those particular things can be broadly talked about and applied for all types of businesses. So that, that was really the essence of the theme. Excellent, and I, I agree with you. And I think that that's something, being able to take that unique perspective and, as you say, kind of spread it around um, to a lot of different business communities is, can be very valuable. Oh, absolutely. Um, so I know that the the event is um, it's fairly it's a pretty you know, limited event I would say 100 participants is what you guys are looking for. That's right. 
Um, it's, it's intended that way, Lisa, because of the format. And it's worth mentioning uh, that it's really different than most conferences in that uh, we, we put people at tables of five. They're rectangular tables. It's not the traditional sort of sit in an audience and look forward at a stage and watch somebody speak. We do have that part, and I think a lot of people refer, um, I think one person that attended Chicago said it was like Ted meets Startup Weekend, and I think that's a pretty apt analogy because we, we deliver ideas, and I think that's, that's the concept of Ted, and, and we have a lot of thought leaders and influencers that get on stage, and so to speak, and then they, they deliver an idea. But what's different about what we do, and I think that's why we like to keep it intimate and small, is that then we, we stop at that point and then we, we bring out our faculty to deliver a workshop or a model that sort, of, that sort of pivots off that idea and says to the participant sitting at that table, now let's try to apply that idea, uh, that, that strategy idea, and, and let's, let's talk about it right now and try to apply that to your business and your project right here, right now for the next 45 or 50 minutes. And we've taken a lot of time to develop these models that, that sort of leverage that idea. And so um, this is not the kind of thing you'd like to try to do on a grander scale. And, and that's why we've purposefully kept the, the attendance down um, in Chicago and in Portland to 150 or less. In fact, in Portland, it's only 100. So, so there's going to be 20 tables of five people at a table really intensely um, analyzing and talking and interacting and networking and all leveraging these ideas that people are going to talk about. So that's really the uniqueness of, of SobCon. Great. And that uh, actually, uh, the first time I heard about SobCon was from someone I admire, Cindy King, who is the managing editor right. of Social Media Examiner. And she was <laughs> raving about the Chicago event and, and specifically mentioning all the things that you just mentioned, how the smaller size is really speaks to right. what she, you know, it was, was very valuable to her. And she made some amazing connections and friendships from going. And um, so it sounds like you have these smaller groups where you can actually then apply the work instead of, you know, walking away and feeling like a overwhelmed by all these things that you've learned that you now feel like you have to go back and apply and it's so easy for that to kind of leave your brain, exactly. you know. Um, well, I love it. I think it sounds like a, a great, uh, a, a, some, a really cool movement in kind of moving away from these grander conferences to something a little bit more intimate. So tell me, who, who do you want to show up? Who's, 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 this, who's going who's gonna to be there? Who do you want to be there? Um, I, I think it's anyone um, who has a business in a business entrepreneurs, small business people, startups, uh, bootstrappers, anyone that is really looking to, to take their, their business plan out to play for a, a couple of days or their business thoughts or their ideas and take them out to play with this wonderful group of 99 other people and the thought leaders that we put in the room and, and then try to come out of that with a, a greater understanding of your strategy or a change in your strategy or a new partner. It's really, it's really meant to be for, for anyone who is, is really at a point where they're just, they're just looking or, or seeking to, to really open up about what they're doing and, and, and are looking for answers or, or looking for direction or looking for confirmation of what they're doing and, and who has not ever been in that situation, whether, it's, whether they're starting up a business or they've started it and, and they're, they're trying to get traction or, for example, we have people that come to SovCon that are in a corporate situation but are thinking about breaking away and, be, and becoming an entrepreneur. I mean, it's a great, it's a great opportunity for that. Um, or even people in a corporate situation that are, you know, I want to be able to think like an entrepreneur. I, I want to bring an entrepreneurial spirit to my business. And we've had people that have done that. So it's, it's, it has a lot of uh, appeal to just about any business person or anybody who, whether solo or with a group or even with a larger group, that really wants to make their business better. Um, great. And I, uh, so on that note, I know that um, not everybody who might be listening to us today is going to be able to, to attend. Um, and it, you know, the, the, it's not one of the 
it, it's a little bit, it's, a, it's an investment, I'll just yes, say. It um, yeah. <laughs> and so for those, you know, I would love, uh, Terry, if you, to, for those of us that maybe can't make it to, to the event, um, how, and we all, I think you're right, like all, anybody really who is trying to, to, you know, earn, earn a paycheck ask themselves these questions that you just outlined. Um, do you have kind of a set strategy or how, what is your philosophy or how do you look at building a successful business model? How do you get started with that? Um, you know, I, I, think, I think it's instructive uh, to see how we built the, the SOPCON Northwest program. And, and really, what we've built a program that, that really answers that question in the sense that what are really the key steps that we see for any business person, entrepreneur, startup, what have you, uh, that you must go through to be able to, 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 to be able to develop something that's going to work and that's going to be a success. And I think the very first thing, just to throw an example out, like the very first thing that we're going to be talking about um, in Portland at the end of September is you, you're the core value proposition. And I think in the, in the startup and the, an angel financing world, which I'm also a part of, I think the, all, the question that always people ask is, what problem are you trying to solve? And, and there's so much depth to that question, but I think that's the very first place you're going to go. And then, and, then, and then once you sort of define the problem that you're solving with your product, and then, and then you have to define, well, who's, who, who fits that description? Who wants that product? So I think there's a series of steps that you take, but it all, it all pivots from that very first and, and core question. And, and, and if, if you go to our site and you look at the program, um, and I think you'll see, um, and then we're going to be having a webinar next Tuesday, by the way, um, which we're promoting on Twitter, where Liz and I are actually going to have a conversation about this, and that is w what, what really does an entrepreneur need to do to really set their business up for success? And I think primarily it's really answering that question, which problem are you trying to solve? Mm-hmm. Excellent. And how uh, webinar, is that open to anyone, Terry, the webinar? Yes, it's sponsored by uh, GoToMeeting, and uh, there is a, if people would go to my Twitter feed, um, I've, been, I've been tweeting it out now for the last couple of days, or if they go to the SobCon Twitter feed, which is at SobCon, there'll be a link to a page where you can register for the webinar. It's on Tuesday the 14th, and it's going to be at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time. Excellent. Um, I will, I'm going to sign up for that. It sounds great. Um, Good, and so uh, final thing, and I love to ask all my interviewees this question, especially people like you that I truly feel um, are innovators. What, what do you think, next five years um, in technology, social media, what, what are your predictions? Do you have anything, any big, you know, Nostradamus? <laughs> 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 Is Facebook going down? Uh, what's going to happen? What, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, I, I thought... I thought there was something I, I, I caught in the financial trade the other day that I've been repeating to people, and I, I thought it was rather significant. And that was is that I think it was a headline that said uh, Wall Street favors LinkedIn over Facebook. And the significance of that I think is rather well, it's rather profound to me because Facebook. Uh, has always con been considered this big giant, uh, the leader in social media. And but you know, really, what's going to what's going to decide everything in the end? The, people have to keep in mind these are businesses. Yeah. Um, they're social media platforms, and they're they're huge, and there's half a billion users. But at the end of the day, the only way to sustain these things is to create some sort of profitable model. And it's instructive to look at that relative to what we were just talking about. What problem? Are they trying to solve? And I think LinkedIn, uh, and the reason why it's more of a darling these days, and why I think it's it's edging ahead in terms of its ultimate value, and I guess that's the profound thing I'm saying today, LinkedIn over Facebook, is that LinkedIn has figured out how someone's profile is actually worth something to you. Yeah. Now, when you think about that for a second, right, Lisa? Where you, so Facebook, Facebook has profiles, but they they don't. There's no value to it. Obviously, from an advertising perspective, they're trying to make value to it. But at least in the LinkedIn model, uh, if you want to see, let's say I'm not linked in with you and I want to see your profile, I have to pay the premium fee to see it, right? Right, right. 
So they've created a way from a business networking point of view to create value with that. And, and Facebook uh, is, is sort of a one-trick pony that way. And then, of course, the added problem, and I think this is the five years down the road, is, is when you start looking at mobile platforms, and um, they already having issues, and I think that's why the stock has done what it's done, is, is because people are really doubting its, its potential on, on that sort of a platform to really deliver what it has been delivering from an advertising perspective and has no other place to go right now. Uh, on the other hand, something like LinkedIn has got other revenue streams. There, it's, you know, it's kind of becoming more of a de facto place that you're going to put you know, your background, your resume, your, your, your offering to people, and it's not Facebook. So um, I think that's, that's been the interesting phenomenon, or interesting, the interesting um, news that's come out in the last couple of weeks that I think is really fascinating. And, and what about, what is your take on Google and Google Plus? Um, I, I think what Google Plus has done is at least uh, contributed a little bit, um, a great deal to the dialogue going on right now out there about what's a, what's, what's a really good social media platform. I, I think all the initial hoopla of it has, has definitely um, gone down in terms of its use as a, uh, we'll say, a platform for interaction. And I think they've made a lot of changes to it. Um, I must confess, I, I was using it more four months ago than I use it today. But what I'll also say, though, is that this Hangout feature like we're on today and some of the technical innovations that they've made, I think, have been rather good. And I, 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 think, I think Google has done itself at least a, a, a pretty good favor to, to at least step out there with something. Now, whether or not it's going to prevail, I think, um, I think I've seen a lot of things about, well, it's, it's plateaued. Um, but I, I, all I can speak of is that I, I, I went back to where I, you know, my, my, my favorite social media platform has been Twitter. And I, I, while I use Google Plus and Facebook, I think that's the one that I keep coming back to. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. Tw tw Twitter for me is my everyday. Um, I can't get away from that one. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but uh, it's like that's the one I signed up for five years ago. It's, yeah. it's, I, I, think, I think a lot of it is, is first movers. I think the first thing you do when you get used to using um, makes a big difference because you, that's that's the, the the first bicycle that you rode, or you know, it's like it's like it, it, it's hard not to come back to that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, uh, great uh, conversation. Um, again, I just want to mention so there are s still seats available for Sabcon Northwest. Yeah, there are a few, but mm, uh, they're starting to dwindle. So I would, if you have any interest at all, uh, check us out. And if you have any questions and want to know more about it, um, I'm, I'm online. I'm, I'm at Starbucker um, on Twitter. Um, you can check out my blog, uh, my About Me, or uh, you, can, you can contact me um, at terrystarbucker at gmail.com and ask me a question about it. I'm happy. You know, I'm in Portland, so if you're a Portlander and want to talk about it, just reach out. I'm happy, happy to tell you more about it. Excellent. And uh, this webinar coming up Tuesday sounds exciting as well. Um, so that's another uh, great um, kind of upcoming event that, that people can also reach out to you there. Yeah, and I can tell you if you tune into that, and it's free, by the way, um, we may have a couple of special goodies that might make the cost of the ticket a little bit more um, nice. <laughs> palatable, as they say. But it's a great value. I, I, think, I think people say that you're right. It's an investment. But Keep in mind, it's, it's two and a half days of, of great, intense learning, and, and we take care of you. We, we, we take great pride, and we provide uh, breakfast and lunch, and we, try, and we take good care of you. And so I, I think it's, a, it's really a heck of a value. Well, excellent. Again, um, thank you so much for your time this morning, Terry. I appreciate it. And as always, it's such a thank pleasure you, talking with you. Oh, um, likewise. Likewise. Oh, you're fantastic. You're, oh, you're, you're so sweet. Okay. Well, t uh, take care, and I, um, I will talk to you soon. All right. Great, Lisa. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.